Hi, my name is Chas. I create videos and blogs about electronics, robotics, and sometimes some amateur radio. I'm revisiting a video I did four or five years ago. I don't even remember how long ago, but it was my very first time with a hot air rework station. And uh, I just decided to throw it on a video and it was a hot mess. And that's okay. It was, um, it was a lot of fun. It's my first time. Um, and you know, I got the job done. Back then I was using an 858D. Uh, it goes by a lot of different names online, but it's an eBay purchase. $35 to, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks maybe, but you usually can get it down to about $35. It's Chinese, it's a real simple hot air gun. It has some decent features on it. You know, you can adjust the, uh, the temperature and the fan speed. Um, there's been some electrical problems with it, but um, mine worked out okay for I don't know, maybe four hours of service, and then it died. Um, the heating element, and um, it wasn't working out so well towards the end of its life, and also the fan died. I could have replaced it, but why? Um, I guess if you're a maker in heart, you could have, but I didn't need to. I wanted an upgrade anyways. Uh, the upgrades go from like, I don't know, $35 to $100 to thousands of dollars. I found something on Amazon Prime, I actually haven't found it on eBay, but um, two days. It's this uh, 996D that I have now. I think I gave like 90 bucks for this thing. It comes with the soldering iron, which I don't use, but the, the hot air machine itself seems pretty decent. Um, I'm guessing it's pretty much the same thing. I haven't taken it apart. Not going to, but uh, maybe somebody else will and they'll post a video in the comments below. The 996D pretty much works the same way. Almost all the settings are the same. Um, you, you run like two or three for a fan speed and that seems to work out pretty decent. First, first time around, I um, got my hot air gun out. I you know, had my little part out there and I, I'm blowing a little circuit. Uh, I don't even know what it was. Maybe a little capacitor, a little chip. 808, um, it was an 0805 or maybe 1206. Again, I, I haven't even looked at it, but I was blowing around the board. I had to hold it down some tweezers. And it was kind of, um, kind of comic. I'll go over that a little bit more while I'm actually doing the, um, the rework. Uh, it's been a number of years. I actually don't use the hot air gun very much because I don't do a lot of repair. Um, now I'm generally using the, the toaster oven and um, that's just for new circuits and it works out way better. I mean, I, I don't know why you'd use a hot air gun unless you had, I don't know, there's, I'm sure somebody has a reason to do it, but not me. <clears throat> so let's get into the video. Uh, uh, it'll be an overhead shot. I'll work through what I'm doing and uh, hopefully <laughs> a little bit better results. Okay, so I picked this board because it was recycler bound. And I also found a uh, component on it that I thought would be a little bit more challenging. <clears throat> I selected that 1117 um, voltage regulator there because it has a nice thermal mass underneath it to dissipate heat. Uh, so I felt like it would be a little bit more challenge. Normally I could have used a soldering iron on this, but um, it's looking for you know something a little bit more challenging than a resistor capacitor. And you can also see it a little bit easier. So I'm throwing some flux on this. It's a rosin flux. I use uh, MG chemicals. Uh, and then there's also a Kester 951 that I use pretty often as well. It'll help um, get in there and, and um, help that, that part come. You know, it removes some oxides and it definitely helps out a lot. So my 996D that I picked up on Amazon, I, I really like this hot air gun. I'm using a, a bigger tip than I normally would, but this is a fairly big part and it's got a little bit of space around it, so I'm not too worried about tombstoning or blowing off a little um, pass of a resistor capacitor somewhere around there. Uh, so it, I feel like it, this is the right tip. They do give you an assortment of tips there. So we'll get started here with our industrial heat gun. I sped this up a little bit just because um, it did take me quite a while and I chopped out some of this. Uh, it was a lot longer than it should have, but I was running um, 630 degree Fahrenheit, which is what I normally use for leaded solder, but um, 
you know, I guess it was a no-brainer. Should have thought about it. This is a 700. Sorry, this was a non non-leaded solder. So uh, I ran 720, and it finally came up. You see me pulling on that a little bit. Watch out. Uh, don't pull too hard. I, I am not. Uh, but if you pull and it's not fully, um, you know, molten, you can pull a pad uh, that is just glued copper onto uh, fiberglass and you'll ruin the board. Well, I mean, you might not ruin it. You might have to run some bodge job or something to get it soldered in there. And uh, there it goes. It came off without too much trouble. It probably took me about twice as long as you saw there but again it was a temperature change uh, next I'm gonna clean up all the extra solder with some wick I use a uh, MG chemicals um, I like the 427 which is this quarter inch stuff and then uh, or sorry eighth inch and then also a uh, 425 um, says no clean I, I don't really I guess maybe it doesn't have some flux in it I would guess I'm not sure but the um, the 425 is a two millimeter and, and uh, that's I don't know. It seems like it's the perfect size for me on most of my stuff. Um, the after I got all the solder removed, just using some regular isopropyl alcohol to to clean up the the flux because it it'll be a lot harder to clean it up once I get that part on. That brush is a uh, I believe it's a hog's hair brush. It's a 2021 from Tech Spray. They're a little on the expensive side, um, but they're worth it. I think I got a little bit of a uh, hair hair on there uh, when it dropped so now it's time to uh, throw on the, the solder paste I use a chip quick 291 AX it's a 6337 solder paste um, probably my favorite type um, if you're not in the US you you might want to check you might not have an option for using this stuff because it does have lead in it uh, I wash my hands. It's legal in the state. It makes your part not ROHS uh, compliant, but um, I like it. It reflows really nicely, so uh, that's what I use. Don't you don't need very much. Just uh, as you see there, I just draw a, a really thin line across the pads, and then a little bit more on the the uh, <clears throat> the heat sink portion of that board. Um, a little bit goes a long way, and if you use too much, you just clean it up with your your wick when you're done. This part, again, I, I definitely could have just soldered it on instead of using the hot air gun, but that would probably defeat the purpose of uh, the video. Just plop it on there. On some of your smaller parts, like passage resistors, it can be a little askew because the uh, that, that solder, once it, it melts, it'll really pull the parts into line. The really small parts you have to watch out too, because if you heat one side over the other, especially in like the the toaster ovens, they'll they'll tombstone, they'll they'll pull themselves up um, on their sides. But a part like this, you don't have to worry about too much. Use a like a, a he sorry a fan range of like two or three, something fairly low. You don't want to blow that part around, which was a big problem with my first uh, first attempt, but. Um, it, it doesn't take too long to to um, reflow this stuff. Again, that is a big um, thermal mass. So the 858D is pretty much the same part, and um, you know it has the same thing. And then there's also these guys here. This is uh, I don't remember the thing, but we have one of these things. They're they're all right. I mean, they preheat the board from the bottom, but I find them totally unnecessary and kind of gimmicky unless you have. Um, just money to throw at it, but they're really, I mean, my only purpose for ever having one of those maybe be a BGA style chip. Um, so there's our reflow and it's, um, it's done. All right, so that turned out pretty good. Um, from the downward camera shot, I noticed after looking at the video, um, doing it against the copper didn't help the lighting out at all. Sorry, I'll um, try something different next time. But the actual circuit came out okay. I know you couldn't see it too well, but there's a, an up close of the regulator. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. But if you have any tips or tricks for our viewers, please leave them in the 
comments below. Also, if you have any um, questions about that or if I forgot to mention something, please leave those in the comments below. I'll definitely get back to you. Thank you and we'll see you next time.